This is some higher maths uh, mixed exam practice and it's for part of unit 1 and unit 2. So some questions from there. We've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 questions. 7 questions to get through and what we'll do is we'll kind of go through them reasonably quickly and I'll try to explain how I would go and solve these. Okay. So first question, let's have a look at that. Right, first question. We've got PQR is a triangle with uh, P at 2, 1, Q at 10, minus 11, and R at uh, minus 18, 3. Find the coordinates of the point of intersection of the perpendicular bisector of QR and the median from it. So first thing I'm going to do is going to draw just a very, very quick sketch of what we've what we've got here. So let's just do a wee sketch up in the corner here. If I had a bit more room, I would make it a bit bigger and it would maybe, maybe look a wee bit better for for uh, what I'm trying to do. So there's my X coordinates going in that direction, Y in that direction. And all I'll do is just plot the points that I've got. So let's go for 2, 1. Just say 2 along, 1 up, somewhere about there, okay? So that's the point P, that's uh, 2, 1. I'll go for the point Q, which is 10 along 10 and uh, down 11. So down about there somewhere. So that's the point Q, which is 10 minus 11. And we've got minus 18, so way along this way, so it'll be way along here somewhere. I'm just going to draw up here somewhere. So that's going to be R, which is minus 18 and 3. So I'll draw up my uh, triangle first of all. Right, so here we go. So from there to there. Okay, from there to there. And from there to there. So that's me got my triangle kind of in place already. Okay. Right then, so from there we're going to, going to start. So what I've got to do is to find the coordinates of the point of intersection of the perpendicular bisector of QR. So I'm going to go to QR. So there's Q and R there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the midpoint. I'm going to find the gradient of QR. And then I'm going to take the perpendicular gradient. And uh, that should allow me to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector. Right, so let's go for the midpoint. So the midpoint of QR. All I'm going to do is I'm going to add the x coordinates together, divide it by 2, I'll take the mean of them. I've got 3 plus minus 11, and that's going to be all over 2 as well. So from there, what I should get is a set of coordinates that's going to be minus 4, minus 4. Okay? So that would be giving me a minus 4, minus 4. So if I think it's somewhere about there, I'll call that the midpoint there, and the coordinates there, minus 4, minus 4. Okay, so there's the first thing I've got. So now what I want to do is to find the gradient of QR. So I'll go for the gradient of QR. And it's going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So but what I'll start with is I'll go for the minus 11. Take away 3. And what we've got is we've got 10 minus minus 18. Okay, so minus 11 take away 3. And we've got 10 take away minus 18. From there, I'll just work that out. We've got minus 14 all over 28. That's good. That works out nice and neat. So that gives me minus a half. Okay, so that's a gradient of this line here. And it looks kind of reasonable. Okay. I'm going to then find my perpendicular gradient. So perpendicular gradient. Okay. All I'm going to do is I'm going to flip that over. So on the top. And I'm going to change it to a positive. So it's like 2 over 1, which is 2. So that's my gradient that I'm going to work with. So if I draw that in... So that's going to be the perpendicular bisector. So that's going to be coming through there somewhere like that. I'm not drawing it very accurately, but um, that's really what I'm trying to do there. So, so that's me got that there, got the, the gradient of that. To find the perpendicular bisector, well, I'm going to substitute. I'll substitute the, um, the gradient that I worked out there, which is 2. And I'm going to substitute the midpoint, because that's the only point that I've got that's on that line. And the point, uh, I'll call it M, minus 4, minus 4. Substitute that into the general equation of a straight line. Y minus B equals MX minus A. I'll then just fire my, my values in. So that's a minus and it's a minus 4. Is equal to the gradient, which is 2X minus minus 4 again. So it's going to be Y plus 4. Multiply this side out. 2X. That's going to be a positive 4. So it's going to be a positive 8. And then when I bring that 4 over, I'm going to change it round. So I'm going to say it's... That there, bring a 4 over, and that's going to be a 4. So I've got y minus 2x is equal to 4. So there's part A complete. Okay, Part B. 
part B you have to, to work out the uh, the median from R and then they'll find out the intersection. So the median from R, so what I've got to do is I've got to go along to R and what I'll be doing is I'll be drawing a line between there and the midpoint. So I've got to find that midpoint there. I'm going to call that the point N and that's going to be my uh, line that I've got here. So there it is there. So I'm trying to work out the equation of that red line that's there now. And then what I'll do is I'll find out where they cross over. And that's the intersection of them. Right, to find the median, what we'll do is we'll find the, it's the side across from R, remember. And the drawing helps you to work that out. So I've got uh, P and Q. So what I'll do is I'll get the midpoint of PQ. Okay. Midpoint PQ. What I'll do is I'll add the coordinates together again. So we've got 2 plus 10 over 2. And I've got 1 plus minus 11 over 2. Okay, so that should give me coordinates of, so that'll give me 12, that'll give me 6, that'll give me 10, so that's going to be a minus 10, that's going to be a minus 5, that's going to be there. So 6 minus 5, and I said I would call that the point N. Okay, that was the point N that I was going to use up there. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the gradient from R to N. So the gradient Rn is equal to y2 minus y1, and remember the coordinates there were 6 minus 5. So what we'll start with will be, go for 3 minus minus 5, all over the minus 18, and take away the 6. So what that should leave me with is 8 there, and minus 24 there. That will simplify down to minus a third. Okay. And I'm not going to take any perpendicular gradient because that's the gradient that I'm really interested in. What I'll do is I'll substitute that gradient that I've got now, which is minus a third, and I can use the point R or the point N in the equation. I'm going to use the point R, so that's going to be minus 18, 3, and we'll just put that into the general equation of a straight line. Right, values going in, y minus 3 equals gradient and it's x, and it's going to be minus, minus 8. You can make that positive if you want, but uh, I just usually put it in the way, it, the way it's going there. Right, so for this bit here, to sort this out a bit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by 3 on the left-hand side, and then the minus 1 I'm going to multiply on the other side. So that will give me 3y minus 9 equals. So minus 1 times x will give me minus x, and minus 1 times that will be a positive 18, will be minus 18 that goes there. I'll gather that up together. So I've got 3y, just check that's on the video, yep, 3y, bring the x over, so that'll be plus x, and take that minus 9 over to that side, and that's going to give me a positive 9 over there, so that'll give me minus 9. Okay, now I'm going to try and work out the point of intersection. So that's like an A and a B part of a question, and then the part C would be to find that point. Okay, so I'm going to grab the equations that I had that I worked out. So y minus 2x equals 4. That's equation number 1. And 3y plus x is equal to minus 9. And that one there will be my equation number 2. Now what I have to do usually is I have to scale one of the equations to make sure that I can work, work uh, or eliminate something from them. I'll um, multiply equation 2. I'm going to multiply that one by... Uh, I'll, go for, I'll multiply it by 2, okay? And what I'll do is I'll be able to eliminate these here. So that'll give me 6y plus 2x, and that'll give me a minus 18 there. That'll be my equation number 3. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to work with equation number 1 and equation number 3. If that's a negative and that's a positive, if I was to add them together, well, I could eliminate them, okay? So that's what we'll do. Okay, so they're different signs, so I'm just going to add. So I'm going to add equation number 1 and equation number 3. Add them together, I get 7y, that goes to 0, and adding them together, I get minus 14. So from there, I can see that y is equal to minus 2. I'll substitute that minus 2 value into, and I'm going to go for just my equation number 1. So I'm going to use equation 1 here, so I'm going minus 2, minus 2x equals 4, so minus 2x is equal to 6, 
So x is going to be equal to 6 divided by minus 2. So that should give me an x coordinate of minus 3. Okay, so, so then I'm just going to be stating my point of intersection. Point of intersection, minus 3 for my x coordinate, minus 2 for my y coordinate. And that's going to be complete today. Right, so marking for this one here. So good marks for this type of question. What we've got is one mark for working out the, um, the, the midpoint here of the perpendicular bisector, getting the gradient of the line, getting the perpendicular gradient, and getting an equation that would be something of that sort there. For the median, what we'll do is we'll get uh, one mark for working out the midpoint, one mark for working out the gradient between them, and one, one mark for getting the equation. We're going to scale the simultaneous equations to make sure that we can eliminate something. One mark, one mark for getting y or x, and then one final mark for pulling it together and naming the coordinates, okay? Because I was asked for the coordinates, so that's the, the main thing there. So, that one there, a 10 marker, okay? Right, question number two. Let's go to question two. Right, what we've got here is... Right, we've got a functions question here, if I look at that. So I've got um, a couple of functions. So my first function, uh, f of x, is equal to cos x. My other function is a g of x function, which is x plus pi upon 6. Right then, so I'm going to work out uh, the value of f of g of pi upon 6. I'm going to work out f of g of x first, just as a general kind of equation for it. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to work this out. Okay, f of g of x. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to substitute the g of x formula into that bracket that's there. So I've got x plus pi upon 6 that's there. Now what I'll do is I'll substitute that into the f function. So I'm putting this part here that's in the bracket where x is in that function, the f function. So what I've got is I've got cosine x plus pi upon 6. Right, so that's me worked out an f of g of x function that's there. What I'll now do is I'll work out the value of the, the pi upon 6 being substituted in. So we've got cosine of pi upon 6. So pi upon 6 is going in where x is. And then I just need to evaluate what's left. So it's going to be cosine of 2 pi upon 6. Simplified that down, that would be cosine of pi upon 3. If I just divide top and bottom by 3, uh, by 2, sorry. And then from there, I need to go to my table of exact values. Because it was a, a non-calculator question. So if I think about where that's going to be, that's going to be a 60 degrees, because pi upon 3 uh, radians equals 60 degrees. And then from there, I should be able to see that that's going to be an answer of a half. Okay. So marks for this one. I'll go for a mark for this part here, getting f with the, the bracket here. I'll go for a mark, I'm going to go for that one there. Okay, so cosine 2 pi up and 6, mark there. Final mark for getting your uh, your half that's there. Okay, so that one there, out of three marks. Okay, next question. Right, so this one here is question 7. Okay, from the exam kind of list that we've got. So the roots of an equation, k x squared minus 3x plus 2 equal 0 are equal. So the roots are going to be equal. So I should know that b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0 for equal roots. So, and that's probably where I'm going to start. First thing I'm going to say is that my a value is going to be k. Okay. My b value is going to be minus 3. And my c value is going to be the 2 that's left there. So they're the values that I'm going to use. And what I'll be doing is starting off with for equal roots b squared minus 4ac is going to be equal to 0. So from there I'm going to substitute the values in and I'm going to work out what the value of k is. Right, so for b I've got minus 3 squared, minus 4 times k times the c value which is 2, that equals 0. The only thing I don't know there is just one part which is k, so I should be able to solve that. That'll be 9, minus 8k equals 0. I'll take the uh, the minus 8k over to that side becomes positive. And what we've got is k is equal to 9 all over 8. Or we've got k equals 9 over 8. Okay, 9 eighths. Two marks for this one here. What we'll go for is, I'll go for one mark for substituting the values into the formula 
with an equal zero there. Must have an equal zero. Okay. And the final mark there for getting the this part here. So just a two marker on this one. Right, moving on to the next question. So what we've got here is question 11 from the list. Okay, so this looks like a completing the square type question where I've got a, a quadratic and I have to express it in the form of 2 bracket x plus p squared uh, plus q and I have to identify the value of q. So I'm going to just complete the square with this one and from there I'll just pick out the value of q from it. Okay, so let's start with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go for 2x squared plus 4x plus 7 and what we're going to do is we're going to write that as the 2 plus q and I'll just find out what q is from there. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to I'm going to isolate um, these terms here and I'm going to take out a common factor just of these two. That's the way I'm going to work this. So I've got 2 coming out as a common factor. I'll just use a square bracket. That's going to be x squared plus 2x and then I've got that plus 7. And I'll just deal with that right at the end, the plus 7. I'll gather that up. So I'm generally just working in this part here. So now that I've got x squared on its own, what I'm going to do is I'm going to half that coefficient that's sitting there. So a half of 2 is equal to 1. So that 1 that I'm going to get is I'm going to put that into two places. So the first place I'm going to put it into there. So it's a plus 1. And remember that's squared. And then what I'll do is I'll just put it into there as well. Just take that squared into there. And I've got my plus 7 that's kind of sitting on the end. I'll now just multiply that big square bracket out. So what that leaves me with is 2x plus 1 squared. Okay. And then that'll be that'll be 1 squared is 1. It'll be a minus 1 times 2 as a minus 2 that sits there. Now I'm going to gather up that 7 that's there. So I've got 2x plus 1 squared. And that's going to be plus 5. Right, so remember I was to equate it to this here. So if I look at that, the value of q is sitting right there. Okay, so therefore, and I'm going to say that q is equal to 5. And that would be my answer. There. Right, okay, we're just going to go for two marks for this. I'm going to go for one mark for getting that part portion there. And I'm going to go for one mark for, for naming the, the q is equal to 5. So just a two mark question here for completing the square. Right, next question. Okay, so we're going to have to show that uh, x minus 2 is a factor of this polynomial that's here. It's a polynomial uh, expression. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this using the synthetic division technique. Okay. Right, so what we're going to start off with is the equation that we're working with. Okay, so it's 6x cubed minus 5x squared minus 17x plus 6. So there's no values missing. So I've got 3, 2, 1 and 0 as I look at the, uh, the powers of x. So nothing missing. So I'm just going to set things up in a synthetic division. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take the 6, minus 5, minus 17, and I've got a 6 that's there, it's a positive. And what I'm doing is, I have to show that x minus 2, minus 2 is a factor. So the way I usually look at it is, I think of that as being our, um, our factors. So x equal 2 is the root, so it's the root that I'm going to divide it by in the synthetic division. So remember, we bring the 6 down, we're going to multiply it by the 2, which will give us 12. Gather these together, which would give me 7. Multiply up, that's going to give me 14. Gather these together, that gives me minus 3. Multiply these, that gives me minus 6. And exactly what I'm looking for, I'm looking for a 0 at the end there. And I'm going to have to say that that's my remainder. So my remainder equals 0. So if I know that my remainder equals 0, then what I know is that, uh, so therefore, x minus 2 is a factor of the f of x. Okay, so that's what I was asked to do in part A. Right, for part B, you have to express it in its fully factorised form. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to start with the f of x. I'm going to give it the um, x cubed minus 5x squared minus 17x plus 6. What I'll do is I'll take down the first factor that I worked out and I proved that that was a factor. So that's going to be x minus 2, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look in here 
and grab the quotient. So that's called the quotient, this part here. If I started with an x cubed, this will be one less, that'll be an x squared. So that's going to be 6x squared plus 7x, and that's minus 3. Right, so that's what I've got there. Now what I've got to do in its fully factorised form, I've got to factorise that part out there. So to factorise that, I'm going to use a, a method. I, I call it the magic number method. Okay, so let's see how we work this one through. And I'll do that in red over to the side here. So if I've got uh, 6x squared plus 7x minus 3, what I'm going to do is get my wee magic number by multiplying these two numbers together. So that's 6 times minus 3. So that'll give me a magic number. Magic number of minus 18. Now if I think about all the factors of, uh, I'll just think about 18 first of all. So I've got 1 in 18. I've got, uh, let's see, 2 in 9. And I've got 3 in 6. So that's all the factors of 18. Now if I try to make um, 7 out of these factors, um, 1 and 18, I could make 17 out of that if I take 1 away from 18, or 19. So I can't make the, uh, what I'm after, I can't make a 7 out of that. If I look at the 2 and the 9, well if I take 2 away from 9, I can make 7, good. So that's probably going to be my factor pairing. 3 and, 3 and 6, I can only make 3 or 9, so it's not that one. So there's my factor pairing there. And the way I'm going to use this is that uh, when I multiply these two numbers together, I make a negative. So I must, one of these must be a negative. If the 7's the positive, well, the biggest number is going to be the positive. Okay? So that's going to be the, the minus there. Okay? Right, what I'm going to now do is I'm going to replace, I'm going to replace the 7x, I'm going to replace that with the minus 2, and... The plus 9, and there'll be x's, okay? Because minus 2x plus 9x equals 7x, so that's all I've done. I've just replaced that. So that's a minus 3 there, and there's the 6x squared there. Right, I'm then after um, looking at this to do um, a common factor. So I'm going to look at the left side of this line, take a common factor out. The common factor will be 2x, and that will leave me inside the bracket 3x minus 1. Just check it and make sure it multiplies back out to get that. For this part here, I'm hoping that I've got a bracket that says 3x minus 1. So let's check it out. So I've got plus 3 would be a common factor, x minus 1. Good. So, whoops, 3 is a common factor, that's the 3 there. So that's 3x minus 1. So they're the, the, the brackets that are the same. So I'm going to group that with uh, this one and this one. They'll group together in the first bracket, 2x plus 3. And then I'm just going to take one of these brackets, and that's 3x minus 1. So back up to where I, I kind of left here. So fully factorised form, x minus 2 was the first one I worked out. Now I've factorised that one there. I've got 2x plus 3, and I've got 3x minus 1. So that's it, and it's fully factorised form there. Right, so for, for marks for this one, what we'll go for is, we'll go for one mark, let's see, we'll go for a mark for making sure I got the 2 here. I'm dividing that by the 2 with the synthetic division. Um, I'll go for one mark for setting up this all out correctly, and the final mark for getting 0 as the remainder, but as long as I've stated 0 equals the remainder, I know what that number is, and that uh, x minus 2 is a factor, that's what that mark's for there. So that's 3 marks there. Um, one mark here for grabbing the coefficient, uh, not the coefficient, the uh, quotient from here. So that there would be a mark. And the final mark for the three of these in a line, in any order you like, but that's, that's the mark there. So we've got five marks that should be available for this question here. That was question 72. Right, nearly finished. We've got a couple more to go. Right, so... See? Right, so question 75, and what we've got is we have to find the x-coordinate of each of the points on the curve at which the tangent is parallel to the x-axis. So I know that um, parallel to the x-axis, we know that the gradient equals 0, okay? Because the gradient in, on the, the x-axis, well, well, that's a gradient of 0. Let's go with that. So what we'll do first of all is, I'm going to write down the equation, 2x cubed 
minus 3x squared minus 12x plus 20 and I'm going to differentiate it because if I differentiate it that gives me a gradient equation okay so that's my gradient equation once I, I differentiate so that's going to be 6x squared minus 6x and that's going to be minus 12 and the 20 goes to 0 okay so that's me differentiated that so what I'm going to then substitute is I'm going to substitute m equals 0 into here and what I'll do is I'm going to just factorise that at the same time. So I can see 6, 6 and 12. So I'm going to take a factor of 6 out. That'll leave me with x squared there, minus x, and that'll be uh, minus 2. And then all I'm going to do is factorise that, and I should have my x values. And that should be me completed the question. So what I have here is 0. I've got 6. Um, I'm going to just factorise it into two brackets. To make 2, and it's just 2 and 1, to look at the signs, if that's a negative, one of these is a negative, one's a positive. If I now look at that, the biggest number's negative. Okay? Just check it and make sure it works. So that'll give us x squared, that'll give us 1x, that'll give us minus 2x. If I gather them together, it's minus x. That times that gives me that. So that's me got it. So what we've got here, 6 doesn't equal 0, or I can just divide the other side by 6 to get rid of that 6, but I've got an x plus 1 equals 0, so that x equals minus 1, and the other one I've got is x minus 2 equals 0, so x equals 2. Right, so that's it complete, because I've just defined the, the x coordinates. So just, just checking out um, some differentiation, setting equal to 0, and working out x coordinates in that question there. Right, first mark we've got here is for differentiating. So we'll differentiate it. The next one is for setting it equal to zero or saying that you're substituting the gradient equal to zero or if you said parallel to the x-axis, the gradient zero. And next mark for factorising. Okay. And the final mark. So I would accept the factorised out without the six being there. That can be missing. And finally, I've got the x minus one and the x equals two. That would be my marks there. So, four marks for that one. Okay. Final question. Okay. So, this one here, what we've got is... So, it's a bit more, um, uh, more complicated than the one before. We've got a lot more work to do. Because what we're going to do is we've got a curve and we're going to find the stationary points. And we're asked for the coordinates. So, that's the x and the y value. And put in coordinate form. And then we're going to do the, the nature of the stationary points by doing a nature table. Right, let's go ahead and do it. Right, so first thing I'm going to do is write down the equation of the curve, okay? So y is equal to x to the power of 4 minus 4x cubed plus 3. I'm going to differentiate dy by dx is equal to 4x cubed minus 12x squared and the 3 is going to go to 0. So I know when I get to there, for stationary points, I know that um, the gradient equals 0. So for stationary points, gradient equals 0 or dy by dx equals 0. So I'll substitute a 0 in that side of the equation. And what I'll do here, I'm going to factorise this. So if I look at this here, it's a two-part. So I can take out a common factor. So from the number side, it's going to be a 4. And from the x-coordinates, I'm going to take out uh, x squared that's going to be there. So from there, I'll have x, and from here, I'll have, let's see, that's going to be a 3. Okay, so that's that factorised that factorized out, just by using the common factor. Right, from there, I'm going to get my x values. So first x value is going to be 4x squared equals 0, so x equals 0. Good, okay. And from here, what I'm going to work out is x minus 3 equals 0, so x equals 3. So there's two values that I've got there for my x-coordinates. Remember, I need to work out my y-coordinate to, to make sure I can put the coordinates of the stationary point together. So what I'll do is I'll substitute into the y equals equation, because the y equals equation will tell me what y is equal at when x equals 0. So let's substitute the 0 into this equation here. So that's going to be 0 to the power of 4, minus 4 times 0 to the power of 3, plus 3. So that one there just works out to be 3. So if that's my y-coordinate, that's my x-coordinate, there's one of my stationary points there. Okay? 0, 3. For this one here, I'm going to substitute in a 3 into the y equation that's up the top here. So that will give me, let's go for 3, 
the power of 4. 3 to the power of 4, that's going to be a minus 4 times 3 to the power of 3 plus 3. So just need to do a bit more working on this one. This one's a calculator uh, paper. So I could use a calculator and just bang that in and get the value coming out. Um, otherwise, I can just work it through. So 3 to the power of 4 is going to be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That's going to give me 81. Uh, I'm going to subtract. That's going to be 27. 27 times 4, that will be 108. And I've got plus 3 there. So if I gather these numbers, numbers together, whether I do it on my calculator or uh, I do it... Um, you know, kind of mentally, I would just do it in the calculator just to, to make sure you don't make a mistake there. That's going to be 3 for my x coordinate, minus 24 for my uh, y coordinate. So that's my other stationary point. So that there would be part A complete, because all I have to do is to find the, the coordinates of the stationary points. Right, for part B, let's see what we have to do there. Right, we've got to determine the nature of the stationary points. So what I'm thinking of doing is just making a nature table. I've got uh, the x values that I'm going to be using here, the 0 and the 3, and um, I just need to make a statement after that to conclude this question here. Right, so first thing I'm going to do is make up that nature table. Right, so just go along to there. Just putting three bars down. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll just go for here. What I've got is on the top, I'm going to have my x coordinates going along this way. So I want to know what uh, one of the values of x that approaches 0. Okay, I want to know a value that's going to be leaving 0 but is before the 3. And then a value that's after the 3. Okay, so I can, I can think of any numbers that work in here. So a number that's less than 0, why don't we just use minus 1? Because that's going to be an easy one to work with. Uh, in between 0 and 3, why don't we just use 1? You can use 2, or you can use a fraction, but I would go for the 1, which should be easier. And for beyond that, we could use something like 10, or whatever number you want to use. I'm going to use 4, because it's just the number after it. So they're the numbers that I'm going to use in my, uh, my nature table. So remember what we've got here, and you need to state that this is dy by dx that you're working out here for the gradient. Because we want to know if it's negative, positive, or 0. And we already know that because it's zero, you know, sorry, where are, where are we? Uh, we substituted in a zero and we got the x coordinates out. Well, that zero must work for us there as well. So that's going to be zero and zero. They're flat because they are stationary points that we've worked out. What I can do with my uh, dy by dx, I can use that equation that's there or I can use this factorized equation. I'm going to use this because that's going to help me work things out. So I've got 4x squared, and that's going to be a bracket, and that's x minus 3. So this is going to be a wee bit easier when I work out things. So there I've got a bracket there. So that times that, and I'm just going to work out whether it's positive or it's negative. Okay? Right, let's go along here and let's work out some of the values. So let's see if I put a negative 1 into the x that's there. So inside that bracket will be minus 1 squared, that will be 1. So it'll be 1 times 4, that'll give me 4, and that's going to be a positive value, okay? If I put minus 1 into here, minus 1, take away 3, that's going to give me minus 4, so that's going to be a negative value that's there. So if I know that a positive times a negative, that's going to make a negative. So that's a negative gradient that I've got uh, before the curve uh, hits the stationary point at 0. For a 1, I'm going to substitute a 1 in here, so 1 squared is 1 times 4 is 4, so that's a positive value for that first part there. For this part here, a 1 in there, so 1 take away 3 is minus 2. So that's going to be a negative again. So a positive times a negative, that's a negative. So if I see that, I would should probably think, is that right or is it not? And I would check my numbers. They're, they're okay the way they are. So a 4, I substitute a 4 in here. So 4 squared is going to be uh, 16. 16 times 4 is 4. So that's going to be a positive value that's here. And for here, if I substitute a 4 in, 4 minus 3 is 1, so that's going to be a positive. So that's going to be a positive gradient that's there. Remember, dy by dx is our gradient. That tells us the slope. The last part of the, the nature table is the shape. And what I'm looking at is the signs. So I know it's flat there, flat there, and before it, it's negative. So a negative gradient would be coming down the way. When it gets to here, it goes flat. It goes negative again, then it goes flat at the zero that's here, and then it's positive. So there's the shape of my graph, if I had to draw it. 
I had to sketch it. All that's left to do now is determine the nature of the stationary points. So for this point here, I would say that the curve has a, and that's a point of inflection, a point of inflection at, and I need to grab the coordinates, so it was the x value of 0, and the x value of 0 went with the 3 for the y coordinate, okay? And I'll just write it again, the curve has a, that's a minimum turning point, so that's turning at the bottom, so a minimum turning point at 3 minus 24. Okay, so that would be it concluded. So that's me, I've, I've worked out the nature of the stationary points. So I'm saying there's two of them. One's a point of inflection, one's the turning point. Okay, there's some different spellings for the point of inflection, but whichever one you choose with an X or with the CT, that's fine with me. Right, okay, so here we go. Let's get some maps. One for differentiating, one for setting it equal to zero, either there or with a zero there. I'd like to see it in both places. Um, I've got factorising next, so one for factorising that out, one for getting our x values, and one for making sure I've written the coordinates uh, correctly there. I'm going to go for one mark for setting up your nature table correctly, one mark for making a correct statement. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this one here, out of seven marks. So in total, this piece of work, um, which would be great for uh, revision for your prelims, um, or for your final exam, this would be a total of 34, 34 marks, okay, that you're looking for there. If you can do that in less than an hour, hey, that's, that's pretty good, that's reasonable, and um, it, it'll be good, good practice for, um, for prelims and final exams. Um, so good luck, good luck with your prelims, that should be coming up reasonably soon. Okay, cheers.